The saying third time's a charm is an idiom that dates back to at least the 1800s. An idiom is a word or group of words or phrase that has a figurative meaning that is not easily deduced from its literal definition. Often using descriptive imagery, it is understood that it is not a literal use of language. They are figures of speech that have definitions and connotations that go beyond the literal meanings of the words. Mastery of the turn of phrase of an idiom and other parts of speech is essential for anyone looking to learn the English language. Common idioms are words and phrases used in the English language in order to convey a concise idea, and are often spoken or considered informal and conversational. Native English speakers often use and hear dozens of idioms in their daily conversations, and often do not even realize this fact. English idioms are great for casual conversation, as they can illustrate emotion more quickly than a phrase that has literal meaning. Even when the etymology or the origin of the idiomatic expression is lost by most of the general population, with them often knowing exactly what the idiom means when spoken to them, but having absolutely no idea where this figure of speech even comes from. Many who learn English as a second language do not easily understand idiomatic expressions that native speakers understand, such as, in a blue moon, spill the beans, let the cat out of the bag, chin up, eye to eye, barking up the wrong tree, hit the nail on the head, kick to the bucket, under the weather, piece of cake, when pigs fly, and raining cats and dogs. As when translated word for word, which only yields the literal meaning without understanding the enigmatic meaning, results in the saying sounding like a bunch of nonsense. In addition to learning vocabulary and grammar, one must understand the phrasing of figurative language of enigmatic expressions in order to fully understand the English language. In this video, we will examine the meaning of the idiom third time's a charm, detailing where it came from and some examples of its use in sentences. In short, third time's a charm means to say that when a person tries to do something, it usually works out in the third attempt, typically to inspire someone for a third attempt when already two have failed, and to keep persevering. Meaning the expression third time's a charm is most commonly used in conversation to encourage someone and invoke luck on their third attempt of some task. Some examples and sentences are as followed. The fellow finally managed to pass his exam, as they say, third time's a charm. He was married twice before, but now expects that the third time will be the charm for him. I have invested in such properties before, and made huge losses, but I am hoping that a third time's a charm. The jewelry was stolen twice before, so the girl is wondering if the third time will be a charm. The third time's a charm for me, you will see how I win this game. If a couple has two sons and now want a daughter, let's see if the third time's a charm for them. Both previous companies that John has started have failed, but this time his business plan is not only elaborate, but also detailed. We are all hoping that the third time's a charm for him. So where did the saying third time's a charm originate? A charm, first of all, is typically used to describe items that are lucky and things that are pleasing. It could easily be imagined that third time's a charm evolved from the idea of having a charm be responsible for the success of a given endeavor. The etymology of the word charm itself is from Latin and charmin, and through the old French word charmi. The invocation of a third time is also significant in this phrase. Humans seem to find in three a sense perfection. The Romans used the saying, omni trium perfectum, meaning everything that comes in threes is perfect. For example, start, middle, end. This principle can be seen in many places if one looks critically. Notice how many threes there are in fairy tales. Three wishes, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Three Little Pigs, Three Billy Goats Gruff. The invocation of three is also used quite extensively in writing and speech making. Listen to any politician and at some point in their speech they will use the rule of three or the tripartite motto. For example, blood, sweat, and tears, the good, the bad, the ugly, vini, vidi, vici, liberté, egalité, fraternité. A triple deity or trinity is common in many if not most world religions as well. This principle can even be applied to art. See the rules of thirds in photography, for example. This belief in the power of three seems to be why, not 
two, or not four attempts, but three attempts, is the lucky one, and it is satisfying to us as a reasonable number for which to know if something is achievable or not, which helps give some reasoning to why the saying third time's a charm historically may have been used. It is also believed that this saying, due to its origin in Britain, may also have some of its basis in old Celtic myth and their similar beliefs in the power of three. The triquarta is an ancient symbol that consists of three overlapping and interconnected arcs, sometimes known as the visca Pisces shape that creates a tri-pointed symbol. The symbol resembles a three-cornered knot as all internal arcs look as though there is no beginning or end. The name itself translates to mean three-cornered, but the true meaning of the symbol likely runs far deeper, dating back to pre-Celtic origins. That being the power of three, the concept that we described earlier that can be found across a variety of human cultures. Since there is little written evidence surrounding pre-Celtic and Celtic life in Britain, scholars can only speculate regarding the pagan traditions and what the symbol truly means. The most popular theory is that the concept of three was a linchpin of a divine belief for the Celts, signifying the triple moon goddess which encompassed the maiden, the mother, and the crone, and connects to feminine fertility. The maiden representing a young girl symbolizes youth, innocence, and new beginnings. The mother, representing love, fertility, and maturity, symbolizes the middle of a woman's life as she cares for others. And the crone represents the facets of the latter stages of a woman's life where she begins to focus on the wisdom learned from a long life and passing it on to the next generation. Germanic tales like those of the Anglo-Saxons may also have contributed to the saying's origin. An ancient German saying is as follows, three things a day, three chances to face judgment, if no appearance before the law speaker, judgment in absence. It is possible that the Anglo-Saxons later enhanced the saying with a bit of superstitious undertone, with the charm aspect of the saying being a later invention. Another suggestion is that the saying refers to the Christian Holy Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit associating a third attempt to be divinely blessed with luck. Perhaps the most interesting theory for the origin of the saying alludes to the belief that under English law, anyone who survived three attempts at hanging would be set free. This belief likely originated with the story of John Baddicombe Lee. Lee was a West Country sailor who was convicted of the murder of Emma Keys at Baddicombe Bay in 1885. He was sentenced to hang at Exeter Prison, and after three attempts to execute him all failed by the noose, the Home Secretary of the time, Sir William Hartford, communed the sentence to life imprisonment, and Lee was later freed. He was known thereafter as the man that they couldn't hang and went on to live a long life, dying sometime in the 1940s. Fascinating story as it is, though, the first use of Third Time's a Charm predates this and thus cannot be the origin. Nor is there any earlier reference to the supposed English law on freeing those who survived three hanging attempts. This legal ruling never existed most likely in any general sense, and seems to have been restricted to isolated cases like Lee's. Despite the several possible inspirations for the origin of the phrase and the belief in the luck of three tries, there will likely never be a definitive answer to when the phrase was first coined and commonly used in English language, with early written sources referring to it as an old saying. However, the first precursor appearances of the phrase in writing are easier to identify, with an anonymous, widely syndicated newspaper column containing the oldest known attestation coming from July in 1827, stating the following. If, as the old saying goes, third time be the charm, the hero of the following paragraph most certainly bears a charmed life. Aye, there is at present living in a village near Paisley a man who has been three times married. Each of his wives' names were the same. He had three children by each, and lived with them three years. He was a widower between each marriage three years. He has three children living, the third by each wife, and their birthdays are within three days of each other. His wife has been dead three years, and he expects to be married again in three months. We can also come across what appears to be a precursor to the phrase in Elizabeth Barrett Browning's letters addressed to R.H. Holm in 1839, where they state, The luck of the third adventure is proverbial. 
The proverbial description from the mid-19th century suggests that the saying is an old proverb and likely dates from far earlier, although how much earlier it is impossible to determine. The saying is also listed explicitly in Alexander Hislop's The Proverbs of Scotland from 1862, where it states, the third time is lucky. The same idea would then be expressed in the American expression, third time's a charm. This likely being an American variant of the earlier third time is lucky. The first written example of this American version is seen in the Weekly Sentinel from June 1912. This comes from a court report about a Mrs. Martha Carlis, who had been married twice before previously. The paper states the following. Mrs. Martha Carlis evidently believes in peace and happiness in wedlock and that she probably thinks third time's a charm, shown by the fact that she was granted a license today to marry Andrew W. Morey. This shows by the early 1900s the phrase was in common use in America and likely Canada as well, and continues to be widely prevalent till this day. In summation, the saying a third time's a charm is a unique and fascinating idiom that seems to likely have its origins bound up in the Celtic and Germanic cultural beliefs of the first English speakers. In the general fascination and respect that cultures and religions around the world seem to hold for the number three. Thank you for watching, and hopefully this video helped explain or at least enlightened you into the history of a saying that you may have heard before and never knew the true history behind. This is a possible new series I'll be trying out, so please feel free to comment any other English idioms that you would like us to possibly explore. Thank you, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. All the support and help is appreciated.